How's it going guys? My name's Jeril here. Yes, I know, it's been a while since I have not uploaded anything. To kick things off, the reason why I haven't uploaded anything is because I have just been very busy with work. What I have here is a 2012, I can't believe I'm saying that, a 2012 MacBook Pro that is still perfectly working in 2025. Now, I got this for around $50, hence why the title is saying the best $50 macbook you can buy which is absolutely true i mean you cannot get any better deal than this this is a 2.3 gigahertz core i7 this is obviously a quad core so it's four cores eight threads maxed out to 16 gigabytes of memory and i believe this has an ssd as well so 480 gigabytes of ssd which is plenty enough for what you're going to be using this computer for this has about 700 cycles so i remember or at least i could vividly remember a guy saying that the battery is a bit iffy i believe the graphics on this is a gt 650m uh, overall this is pretty much what you will find similarly spec wise to a 2014 2015 all the way up to 2017 macbooks the core i7 hasn't really changed that much all the way up to 2017. The only time this quad core really changed in performance was around 2018 when they introduced the i9 series with the six core and then eventually in 2019 it came with eight cores and the rest is history. They moved to the M chips and yada 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 and this is completely obsolete by today's standards. You get the idea. This is running the latest version of its maximum compatibility uh, Mac OS and that is Catalina. So yeah, this MacBook is pretty old. But, you know, the best part about these MacBooks, at least, is that they are very much user upgradable. So we already have seen that this MacBook has 16 gigabytes of memory, so that's already maxed out right there. We already see that this MacBook has an SSD, which is already maxed out as well. So in theory, the only thing we can do is to put OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now, I believe now that macOS Tahoe is out, unfortunately, we cannot install macOS Tahoe safely props to the open core legacy patcher team for really making these older machines alive and kicking even in 2008 you know which is crazy with a core 2 duo you might not be able to use a lot of them for day-to-day -day task but rather the fact that they can still be used as a spotify machine or some email some sort of machine is still mind-blowing to me because if you think about it in the early 2000s a lot of these machines from the 90s are completely obsolete by 2005. Now, looking at the body of this MacBook, it is a bit on the beat up side. There's a lot of dents on the bottom. And I believe, oh, well, I just added one. I believe this was used throughout college. It's essentially a hand-me-down MacBook throughout the years. And you can see how there's that typical crack on that plastic bit. But we're gonna go ahead and open this up and see how dirty it is on the inside. Now, the best part about this MacBook is the fact that we could easily use any sort of Phillips screw right here. Please don't be dusty, please don't be dusty. Okay, that's not bad. That is actually not too bad. Um, it's definitely, definitely needs some good cleaning, but those fans are surprisingly mint for what they are. The battery seems like it's original. And of course, we have our 16 gigabytes of memory right here, which is not branded. So this is probably going to go bad. Everything here just needs to be cleaned up. I'm going to do that right now. So after a couple of minutes of cleaning this thing up real good, as you can see, it's a bit better. I also realized that this SSD is, wow, we're basically missing two mounting points. So we're going to go ahead and fix that just a bit. And voila, maybe one more. Just roll it down like that and bam. Look at that, a lot better than before. It is indeed quite dusty. As you can see, there's a couple of dust bunnies right here. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the chassis. I will be right back. So a little bit of an update while I was cleaning, I'm starting to realize there are a couple of spots where there is a little bit of corrosion. That right there, my friends, is slight corrosion right there. Can't really tell if that is just from humidity or someone has spilled something over time. I mean, everything else on the chassis is very clean, as you can see right there. So hopefully there's nothing else wrong with this thing. I don't really care if one of the ports that is called firewire doesn't work because I don't really need that. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and do the thermal paste part of this video. Put this on the side. And here's the part. 
that is like this. Now I have a feeling underneath all these negatives is a lot of dust leads from being healed. And you don't want that because I have a specific ask. <laughs> um, yes, okay. Anyway, let's see. Okay, this has definitely been replaced before because that is a lot of thermal paste, but it is due for replacement regardless. And there's a lot of dust. So back at it again, outside in the middle of the night. Thermal paste time. I hope I still have enough. It's been a while. So we just need a little bit of a, a bloop in the middle right there. Perfect. And then we got the little graphics right here that needs a lot of cooling because of its superior performance. Wow. All right, that's good. Seems to have enough. Okay, so I was looking at this enough. There's a bit of a corrosion in this area, that's mostly because of dirt and rag. It's just one day. It's not going to be full of dust. You can check the logic. So we're just going to forget a couple of questions. It has been about a month since I made that disassembling of this MacBook. A little bit dusty because I have put this on the side for some reason. And I think that reason was the fact that I could not, for some reason, install Windows 10 or 11 on this computer. No matter how much I tried, it just did not seem to work. I wanted to try GTA 5 and other Steam games on this computer, but for some reason it just would not work at all. So. What I have gone to do instead was just install macOS Sequoia with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. I spent the past hour trying to install a lot of the programs that I normally would showcase. One of the things that struck with me the most is Photoshop and Lightroom. And the fact that this is not charging, is it charging now? There you go. Photoshop would not install the latest version despite running on Sequoia, which is a very recent version of macOS. Although we have macOS Tahoe now, Unfortunately, this will not be supported even with the patcher. Photoshop 2021 is the last version you can use Photoshop with driver support. And so you will not be getting any AI features or any of that fancy stuff. But as you can see, it does work. So if you go ahead and create new right here. Now, I don't think Photoshop will be an issue on this computer knowing that this is a quad core with eight thread and with 16 gigabytes of memory, which this thing has, it's not too bad. But what I'm very curious about is if AirDrop works. So we're gonna go ahead and try using AirDrop feature on this, despite being on an unsupported version of Mac OS, I'm pretty sure AirDrop should work. It says right there, local MacBook, which I guess that's the name for this computer for some reason. And does it work? Let's see. Oh, it does. Look at that. Let's click accept, save to downloads, and voila. This is actually a little bit better experience than the dual core 2017 MacBook that I showcased last week. So you can zoom in, you can do a test right there, turn that into white, select all, get that text up to 60 and boom, and it disappeared. Of course, because this is the generation where we can use a good old USB a plug. We're going to plug in my mouse right here so that way we can play some games and take it seriously. Of course, we all know and love Minecraft will work no matter what, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious to see how that GT650M plays out. And this is only pushing 1440 by 900, so it's not even a 1080p panel. So therefore, this shouldn't be really an issue when it comes to playing games because it should be a lot better, right? And it's not, it really isn't. As you can see, it's a very playable experience, right? It's not a full 60 FPS because it does go down a bit. You could feel a little bit of dips in the FPS. There you go, we got the fast preset. Give it a few seconds to load. Okay, this is fast preset very low chunks, but this is a smooth 60 FPS now for sure. And we are hovering around 160 frames per second. But mind you, this is the lowest of the low, according to Minecraft. So not too shabby. And if, of course, if we look up the sky, it's gonna be a lot better. Uh, let's go ahead and go to fancy right here. And as you can see, it already dips down to around 46 FPS, which is still plenty playable. Anything that is about 30 FPS is completely fine. And the thing with Minecraft is that every time I put up this FPS info, it always just for some reason bogs down. So if I actually turn this off, it's a lot smoother as you can see. So it's not really a one-to-one -one basis and that's mostly because this is an older machine and you can definitely hear that fan spinning a lot and I have never seen that type of animal. Oh, that's a pig. I recently downloaded this car game called Car X Street PC 
And if you go ahead and go to store page right here, I guess my scroll doesn't work on this computer. Minimum Apple Silicon only. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. Requires an Apple processor, Mac OS Sierra, 16 gigabytes of RAM, that is recommended specs. So yeah, I'm not too sure if this is gonna be a fun experience with this MacBook, but you know what, it is what it is. If you go to Windows right here, it does require a 1050 Ti 4 gigabyte, <laughs> and we have a 512 megabyte video graphics. Oh my gosh, what a slideshow. That car does sound good though. Oh, we got some artifacting. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, this is not great. This is not a great experience, but... <laughs> what the heck is that? That Porsche does sound good though, I'm not gonna lie. Oh. I can't even read this thing. I'm just gonna presume that the lowest is the minimum. Uh, but hey, would you look at that? We can play Car X. <laughs> I think this game came out on like just last year, right? <laughs> oh, 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 gosh. Let's make that 720 right there. We should be able to see a better resolution. There you go. See, look, that's not too bad. We're, we're getting somewhere here when it comes to optimizing this game. That's not bad. 720p, that looks like a PS3 game. I mean, I don't mind that. The issue is a lot of stuttering. There's just plenty of stuttering on this video game for some reason. The VRAM just not having enough VRAM. It's only 512 megabytes. We're not gonna get into racing because there's no point. I'm just curious to see how this thing performs overall in general when it comes to driving around. Quite impressed by the fact that this is still running and it refuses to crash somehow. <laughs> I think in Windows this can definitely fully work somehow. I'm gonna call that as this. There's just no way we can play this game. Now that I'm done with this, I'm actually gonna uninstall this because even though it's pretty cool to play, yeah, that's not really something that is playable. I guess we can max out everything here now that we know that this isn't too bad. High foliage distance. Yeah, let's, let's turn on ambient occlusion, FXAA on. No, it's not bad. Look at that. Perfectly playable. And it looks way better. All right, look at that. High settings, 1440 by 900. Come on. Ah, oh, I'm out of. <laughs> uh, oh God, I don't think we're gonna die. Hey, come on, bro. <laughs> Got him. So it seems like 1440 by 900 at high settings on this game works. So now we're opening Cinebench, and for the most part, I already know where this is coming from. It's not gonna be at the top five or top 10 of the CPUs that this i7 is gonna perform, but you know what? I would generally be impressed if it somehow still isn't too bad. So as you can see, we have an i7 3615QM CPU, so four cores, eight threads. This number seven right here, eight cores, 16 threads is the i9-9880H, which is found on my 2019 16-inch MacBook. And right below it is the M1. I don't think it's gonna perform any of these. I mean, the M1 Max is super far up. This is how loud it is. Now keep in mind there's two fans and they're both getting maxed out at the same time. So that just shows you the biggest improvements when it comes to the M series Apple Silicon compared to the old Intel era MacBooks. Even, even from this far away, it's pretty loud. It definitely took a good while and it's still running even about 30 minutes later. It said it was 10 minutes. Nope, it took 30 minutes to finish it. And our score is about 190 points, which isn't, I mean, that's to be expected, to be honest with you, which is actually pretty crazy to think about. 
because for a while, you know, four core eight threads was really the norm for Intel for a couple of years, all the way up until 2017 for MacBooks. And so if you put that in perspective, you didn't really get a lot of performance gains until really just almost five years ago, six years ago. I'm just glad that Apple has moved to M chips and M Apple Silicon series because one, this is a very loud machine right now running this benchmark. And two, we definitely have seen a gigantic performance gain compared to the yearly upgrades back in the day when when Apple was still with Intel. Honestly, in my personal opinion, I don't think this is too bad for being a 2012 machine. And for a while, the 2012 MacBook Pro 15 inch was a very decent machine all the way up until 2020 when the Apple Silicon came out. It was good for the money. It was, you know, it had all the ports in the world. And while I'm gonna go ahead and actually unplug this right now to show you guys that this is one of the highlights for this MacBook is that you have all these ports in the world and Apple moved back to an SD card and the MagSafe, which was crazy to think back when they were in that USB-C fiasco back in the day. But overall, I feel like this $50 MacBook did serve its job. For day-to-day -day task, it's not gonna be any different than your 2020 MacBook or something like that. It might be slightly slower and it might not have a retina display or it might not have the latest and greatest specs in the world, but it will do the job. And you can still go to YouTube, look up my YouTube channel, subscribe, <laughs> and you can see it works. And it actually works good. Like it's not something that I would be annoyed by, unlike the dual core MacBook that I previously showcased last week. This is completely different. It is completely fine and it's responsive. It's not slow. This is what your ear looks like. You still get ads from my YouTube channel. <laughs> Please watch the ads. This is a perfectly usable machine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Okay, so after letting this thing install, we have a beep that indicates we have some memory issues. And I could be potentially right regarding that RAM being way too easy to take out. Let's restart this and see if it makes any difference. Oh, yep. <laughs> wow, I can't believe that just happened.